give up the candy. from poles 
Other than the dominant pole is very small. So it's a good approximation to only model with the dominant pole, which means a single pole system, which means one by one A matrix, Taylor A matrix, okay? And in that case, the GU or GDI is only one pole. GU would be C D over S minus A e to the minus ds, and gdi would have been c gamma i over s minus k e to the minus ds. And <coughs> our goal is, uh, sorry, Experimental response or the simulation response from the nonlinear complicated model to what the model would be responding. And then we would have some way to judge this is a good approximation in these files. So we need all the methods are based on the response of the model. Three step process that we've done already a few times. 
So we find pi prime of A. Get u prime. I, I was using u last time. I wasn't using z for u or di, right? Just want to say consistent with what I was doing last time. U y prime bar equals g u of s u prime bar. In other words, k over tau s plus 1 e to the minus d s and z prime bar. And 3, y prime of k is the inverse of y prime. Dictionary, part of practice expansion, and dictionary. So that's how we find the response of the first order plus time delay. That's how we find the response of a second order plus time delay mode or anything more complicated. Clear, everyone? <coughs> All right. So we're talking about a step change in the input. That means that the actual input u starts at the nominal value. And at some time that I'm calling t naught, it changes to a new value. And if the magnitude has changed, if we call that delta u, this is my change of u. <coughs> the new value here is what? U naught plus delta u. So that's what the actual input is doing. What is the actual input deviation doing? U prime is u minus u naught. So if you subtract from this signal u naught everywhere, what will that do? It will be at zero until time t naught, and then it will change the new value delta u. In other words, writing this in mathematical terms, u prime of t is zero for times less than t naught, and delta u for times greater or equal to t naught. which is exactly what we have for the delay in the dictionary. So this is 0, h of t minus d. If this is h of t minus d, d, d being t naught here, h of t is, you replace whatever you have t minus d by the uh, I was, Let me take just one second to discuss a common error in the example, one common error that I saw from some of you, I, I wrote down to explain where you messed up, why this stuff looks like we've done it right, it's not right. And that is in the very last problem, five. So parentheses, sorry for that, but yeah. So parentheses. In the exam problem, the last problem, I was giving you two prime of day. It was 3 times t minus 8 times e to the minus 2 t minus 8. And I was telling you, very important that at time a, the manipulated input deviation is changed from 0 to that. So this at time a. So this for t greater or equal to 8. Since I'm saying at time a is changed from 0 to that, what is u prime? for time less than eight. Zero. Zero. Okay? And what do we have? That's the standard dictionary situation where this is an h of t minus a. This here is h of t minus a. So how do you get h of t? Wherever you have t minus a, you replace t minus a by t. So h of t would be 3, t minus 8 is replaced by t, e to the minus t minus 8 is replaced by t. So h bar, if you do the dictionary, 
uh, sorry, that's uh, A to the N. If you go to the dictionary of that, you are going to get <coughs> T, T to the minus AT is what? 1 over S plus A squared. So that's 3 over S plus 2 squared. And U prime bar, dictionary, the delay is H bar E to the minus DS, which is AS, so 3 over S plus 2 squared E to the minus AS. And if you did that, you would have gotten full credit. Now, a lot of you did the following. It's kind of interesting. So it's skill on your side. So the original credit I was giving only 3. At the end, I decided to give you as much as six. But, so a lot of you, I'm saying a lot, maybe five or six, took that three, t minus eight, into the minus two, t minus eight, and rewrote it as three, t minus eight, into the minus two, t times into the plus 16, and then rewrote that as 3 times e to the 16 times t e to the minus 2t minus 24 e to the 16 times e to the minus 2t. And Laplace transform goes most of you correct. And this is going to give you a different answer than this. So why is this giving a different answer than this? Because that's the Laplace transform of this, if that was valid for all positive times. This would have been the correct answer if this function was holding from time zero. Because then from time zero, it obeyed this equation. If it wasn't zero from time zero to eight. This is, okay. This is what? This is uh, a decay with an increase at time 8. This is 0 for the increase in the decay. So this looks, what this looks like is 0 until time 8 increases and goes down. Increases slow and then goes down exponentially. This function would look, continuing this, and probably to go negative and do this. Okay, so yeah, follow true. So the orange function, and here's time zero. The orange function would have the Laplace function of this. This is the orange function. The problem was not asking the orange function, the problem was asking the white function. Zero until time <coughs> Is it clear, guys? Yeah. So that's what was wrong. Okay. All right. So that reminds me. Here, on this case, this is the h of t minus 8. How do I get h of t? How do I get h of t? Awesome. I replace whatever I see t minus 8, t. Where do I see t minus 8 here? Where do you see t minus 8 here? No Right? h of t minus 8 is delta u. What is h of t? Also delta u. No. t there, replacing t minus 8 doesn't change anything. By t doesn't change it. So h bar is that's a constant for 